tonight, um, we're delighted to have a, a wide range of sponsors, uh, for which we're very grateful. So thank you to uh, the National Infrastructure Commission, we'll be saying a few more words shortly, uh, to Cambridge Consultants, to Huawei and to Ofcom, and to our hosts, uh, Mathis and Squire. Um, we're absolutely delighted to have so many of you in the room today because as, we, as our thinking has developed, we really want to test that with a broad range of people from across the industry, at least some of the other organisations who have to deal with these issues on a day-to-day -day basis. We're really interested in whether there are ways in which the government can, play, can usefully play a greater role. And just today, I saw a news item that uh, was looking at some survey of 800 people from across the industry, and it had asked them when they thought 5G was going to be deployed, and the majority of them said sometime between about 2018 and 2019. Wow! So who thinks it's just an evolution of all the existing stuff at this point in time? That looks like a bit more than half. If I get on the train from Brighton to London, which I do on a very, very regular basis, I would dearly love to be able to make a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> that lasted longer than 30 seconds. So it's pretty clear to me that the market hasn't delivered yet on road and rail what we might expect. It's difficult. Hands up for consistent connectivity or hands up for high speed mobility. So consistent connectivity. Oh well. <laughs> we all want to make that phone call, right? So in answer to the question of this debate, is 5G <coughs> technically ready yet? Well, not yet, but we are working on it. And as technologists, it's absolutely the case that we can make this stuff work. 4G is there. If you want ubiquitous connectivity, that, which is what everyone wants, then we will need to use 4G as that base layer. Etsy have just decided what the name for 5G is going to be. It's going to be 5G. <laughs> Increasingly being said, and, and this survey I alluded to at the start of these 800 operators, uh, or people interested in 5G. I think the vast majority of them said the most important element of 5G was Internet of Things. Who's making money out of IoT today? People are actually buying in quite large quantities small white goods right now, and they're paying significant amounts of money for it. No one's going to create a 3D PP standard that you can't make money of. So we, uh, in terms of in terms of um, IoT, we, we think narrowband IoT is. is, is is the, the, the radio technology to go for now that yeah. takes the sort of wind out the sails of any early 5G IoT. A word of caution about R&D versus standards, you cannot measure where 5G is today on the standards work because some of the standards work may not start until four or five years time. Mm -hmm. On the question of what, what is the definition of 5G, I was thinking back to the definition of 4G and 3G. So, um, and they're effectively political. So all the people who said 5G is going to appear by 2017 or 2018, no, 2018 or 2019, are probably smoking some pipe, but I don't quite know why they all <laughs> thought that. Um, we solved the world. Thank you. Because I think the most impressive thing for me was the understanding among our colleagues of how much common understanding there is of what 5G is about as well as highlighting some of the differences. I'd just like to compliment um, Cambridge Wireless on bringing this event together. Uh, as I work on 5G, it's imperative we look at innovation and collaboration, and actually the topics discussed today gives us the foundation to take those forward so we can roll out 5G uh, to the benefit of all society with the right technology at the right time. The debate was very useful. Uh, Cambridge Wallace put together a good panel, but also in the room there were some very interesting people to meet. And actually we need understanding with 5G before we can deliver it. It was uh, a really, really interesting session today, actually incredibly helpful for the uh, National Infrastructure Commission and their report on 5G. Uh, really informative and very interesting to see where the audience today uh, had quite divergent opinions about where 5G might play out and where it might not play out and where actually there was a little bit more uh, converged views actually around around the future of 5G. So yeah, really, really interesting and, and very helpful to have that um, uh, all, all from today's session.
I fear before I came in that it would be hard to get any clear views out of the panellists and we'd end up with as much confusion in the audience as already exists in the wider environment. But what was great was actually the panellists were very willing to focus down on the key issues and I think that allowed the audience to make their own decisions as to where things are going. And I think we concluded quite clearly that actually not much will change in the world by 2020. There'll be a continual evolution at that point. And if there is anything new in 5G, it will come after that. So actually we need to refocus on making things move smoothly over the next few years and looking for greater change in the longer term.